Um, let me start with a small story that illustrates uh, and motivates our work. And so in this story, we reference a 2016 TRAPEX Research Labs report that highlights a breach in the healthcare industry. The victim had a traditional enterprise defense mechanism that included uh, enterprise defense firewall, a heuristic-based intrusion detection system, endpoint security, and antivirus. Um, the, uh, the system was configured to prevent the, the flow of network from outside the network into the network and partition between the separate VLANs. Uh, recognizing the sophistication of the defense, the attacker registered a client-side registered a client-side exploit on a malicious website, and was able to spearfish a nurse's workstation. From the from the presence of the nurse's workstation, the attacker was able to move laterally um, to a picture and archive command and control system or PAC system that it used as a command and control system to pivot freely through the network. Because the PAC system had uh, had looser controls um, required to ship images uh, such as x-rays off-site, the PAX was a, an excellent presence point for the attacker to move through. The attacker moved from the PAX system to the ultimate target host where it compromised confidential pa patient records, moved them back onto the PAX, and then externally out of the network. This, this motivating example really demonstrates uh, the problem we're trying to solve um, and, and motivates our work. And so, We'd like to know if we can extend information flow control tracking through the host to the network to prevent attacks that bypass traditional enterprise defenses um, that exploit these types of blind spots in the network. We see three key problems with that. Um, the first is practical policy enforcement. And so a lack of accuracy in our policy can cause propagation labels to fail. Um, and that can, or in course precision can cause false positives that lead to taint explosion. Next. Um, there are some statistical means of detecting these type of stacking stone attacks. However, they don't use persistent labels. And persistent labels cannot survive um, transformation at intermediate steps. So if a host compresses, encrypts, uh, or, or modifies the data in some type of way, the label does not remain. And then finally, um, attribution. And so the key to preventing any future attack is to understand the what, where, why, and how a loss of confidentiality occurred or a threat to secrecy. And so we'd like the ability to, to forensically examine all the processes, connections, and, and logs to identify what happened. So how have people done this in the past? Um, there's been kind of three, three areas of related work that I'll just briefly discuss. We identified this, the, the statistical means uh, that have been looking at stepping tone stones for over 15 years. And they traditionally introduced things like network delay, um, rearrange the order of packets, and they statistically correlate those across flows. Again, that doesn't survive the fact uh, if an intermediate host simply um, stores the packet before forwarding it, and during storage does something like compression or encryption or splits the flow. Uh, we're motivated by all the, the recent advances in SDN security and the SDN to use uh, to rapidly prototype security applications and the insight that can be gained from uh, using the SDN as the, the network forens uh, to perform network forensics. And then finally, the, the work of the Linux Providence Monitor um, has given uh, a great deal of uh, insight into how to do whole system provenance on the operating system. And uh, the last paper up there is the one that's closest to our work and it, it Gave, gave the initial insight into extending provenance to the network by labeling packets. Um, however, this work uh, probabil probabilistically removed taints, which sacrificed security for, for usability. And so we presented uh, a different uh, design approach, and I'll briefly kind of go over that. So in our broad overview here, um, Pivot wall broadens the enforcement of secrecy by establishing information controls at the SDN controller. We, we implemented our security application um, as using the POX interface. Uh, and on the hosts, um, we, we, we utilize the simple flow uh, kernel. The simple flow is a provenance aware kernel for, the Lin uh, for Linux. Um, and then we built an agent that simplified communication between, uh, between hosts protected by the simple flow kernel and our, and our SDN controller. 
When an administrator labels a packet as confidentiality, a label or labels a file or a process as confidential, a label is applied. And so in this case and scenario, uh, the administrator labels file F as confidential. Um, when a process accesses that file, that, that, that label is propagated to the process. And finally, when that process writes the packet or writes the data, the confidential data in the form of a packet to the network, the host agent intercepts this at a net filter interface, informs the SDN controller that a tainted packet will be coming through and of the original origin of that, of that um, confidentiality, referring to file F. The packet is then sent uh, with, a, with a label. Um, data planes, the data plane seeing the label and, and having a corresponding open flow match um, forwards the packet up to the SDN controller where the policy is applied. In this case, the policy permits the flow of data from host one to host two, or confidential data from host one to host two, so the packet is then forwarded back down. The, the host two is informed via the SDN controller that an agent, that a confidential flow is occurring, and then the packet is sent. Upon processing the packet, the simple flow kernel uh, marks the, the process P2 as, as tainted. Kind of a brief description of our threat model here, but our threat model assumes the attacker's goal is to obtain confidential information. To achieve this goal, attackers must evade uh, de intrusion detection systems and bypass network defenses. Um, we maintain that the trusted computing base includes the SDN security application, the network data plane devices, and each host operating system. Um, currently, in, in our implementation of this, we do not protect against a malicious but trusted insider that can detect the host agent, remove confidentiality labels uh, on data and processes, or disable the host. Um, we currently leave the attestation of, of our host agent as a deployment task. We place the, uh, the policy for handling confidential information or the flows of confidential information in the hands of the, of, uh, the administrator, and we do this using a, a policy language. The policy language is very similar to uh, in nature to SNORT. Uh, the syntax provides flow granularity um, that specifies the most basic um, elements, such as the flow's protocol direction and port. The gray elements are the elements that would be similar in, in, in nature to SNORT. The red ones are the ones that are unique to pivot wall. And I'll just briefly discuss the last three. The redirect um, allows for the a flow of confidential information to be rewritten, um, the packet header to be written to the source or destination. The slow um, allows uh, us to rate throttle packets, either using uh, by changing the size of the TCP congestion window or simply queuing the packets. And finally, the modify um, flow allows us to rewrite packets based on a customizable script. This modify action reduces the impact of false positives while decreasing uh, uh, um, while, de while, while, decrease, while increasing true positives. Consider the specific case where an administrator may write a rule that has a high false positive rate. Um, the modify action permits the administrator to allow the flow of confidential information, but eliminates the optional fields that might carry confidential data. And so we'll provide a brief example of that, of a, of a modify script. If we have a, a simple covert uh, ICMP method um, that's very common where covert data is embedded inside of an ICMP echo request. Um, if an administrator accesses, or if, if a user administers, uh, uh, accesses um, secret data, it will, then, um, it will then, the packet will become labeled and will arrive at our controller. Um, we'll demonstrate here how a simple modify script can take that, that packet um, and Rewrite the secret data uh, with all A's. And so that's very simple to do in an easy, clearly defined, definable language for, the, for the, the administrator of the controller, and it can be done in about seven lines of code here. One of the key uh, elements of our uh, design is that it has persistent labels um, that, that travel with the packets. Um, there's three key labels that, that get placed on packets. The first is a host label, and one bit is borrowed from the IP fragment field. Um, this is the evil bit uh, 
Um, this is required by the simple flow kernel to let it know it's processing a packet that has a, uh, that carries confidential information. We use the, we borrow the, the full, a full byte from the network uh, type of service header, and that allows us to create steering on demand rules using open flow flow modifications. And that works with all legacy open flow hardware going back to version 1.0. Um, and then finally, there's the origin label is the 120-bit universally unique identifier that an administrator, that, that the host agent sends uh, directly to the controller to let it know the, which flow, uh, the origin of the confidential information that's contained in a, in a, in a flow. The network information flow control graph is a set of directed graphs where each graph is indexed by the UUID. The, it, uh, it contains a set of vertices that represent uh, all the hosts that have processed, access, or stored confidential information, and then it contains a set of direct edges that represent the, the, how that confidential information is flowed. So we'll briefly walk through an example here. Um, if we have a rule that, that indicates that the confidential information may not flow from host one to host four, that it must be dropped. When we have a packet arriving between host one and host four, it gets processed by the confidential rule, um, and, and the packet gets dropped. For simplicity's sake here, let's assume that the universally unique identifier is one, we'll just use one byte to represent it, and, a graph, and, and so subsequently a graph is cre created for UUID one. Because the, because the packet never arrives at host four, host four is not added to the graph. S secondly, when a, when a second packet arrives bearing the same UUID, um, a directed edge is added to the graph, when a packet bearing a separate UUID is, create, is, is um, delivered, a, a second graph is constructed and repeated. If a packet bearing no confidential flag is, 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 uh, arrives, no actions are taken. And finally, when a, uh, a packet um, bearing the source host two and destination host four creates a path from host one to host four, the packet is also dropped because of the path violates our rule. The insight that can be gained from a network information flow control graphs really allows us the unique aspect of doing forensic analysis. Um, both the network and the host maintain provenance data about the flow of confidential information, and we can do SQL-like queries on those to reconstruct how attacks have occurred. In our evaluation, we really ask four key research questions. In our first research question, we want to test the, the, um, how, how PivotWall performs against stealthy attacks. And so we looked at um, two different types of scenarios, in, uh, both store and forward and active relay. Um, store at forward is when, when we use a stepping stone or an intermediate host to, to store data before, uh, before moving it on to exfil it out of the network. And an active relay channel is when, when data is, 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 is copied uh, through the process to a new, new network connection. In both these models, we, we tested with encryption um, and without encryption. And then we applied um, both network intrusion detection and host-based uh, intrusion detection using the, or, uh, using the most conservative rules possible to prevent the flow of information from a host uh, through an intermediate stepping stone uh, outside of the network. And what we saw is that um, traditional enterprise defenses lack the full context of what's occurring inside the host or on the network to make a full holistic picture of the attack. And this is where pivot wall, in this specific class of attacks is where pivot real, well, really succeeds is that it, it understands the full context of information flow controls while it's occurring. The next thing we did is test the broad range of network protocols, um, application protocols, um, and uh, to determine um, uh, the, the coverage of pivot wall. And, and so we, extended, we, we tested against a toolkit known as the Data Exfiltration Toolkit, and DEP provides nine different communication channels. You can see them up there. Um, ranging from um, abusing common protocols like DNS, HTTP, and ICMP, as well as commercial tools such as Gmail, Slack, and Twitter. Um, 
we use debt to exfil data, uh, confidential data out of the network, and in all the cases, PivotWall was able to detect and, and defend against it. Finally, uh, or next, we looked at the performance aspects of PivotWall, and we evaluated it against a simple Mac layer uh, controller switch that just uh, matched traffic on a layer two protocol. Um, we, we evaluate it using the iPerf3 toolkit uh, to determine both the total achievable bandwidth solution, jitter, and then the, we measured um, and then the, how it affected the congestion window. As the results illustrate, both unlabeled pivot wall traffic and mat layer, Mac layer traffic have similar performance. However, the labeled traffic, that's traffic that has been tainted because it's touched confidential information, is limited to 53% of the achievable bandwidth. In our experiment, the most notable impact uh, that this was occurring was because of the, the size of the growth of the TCP congestion window. Um, finally, uh, we, we determined, we examined the response capability of PivotWall and see how PivotWall could prevent an attack against a modern toolkit that it's used to covertly exfiltrate data. And so for this, this case study, we looked at the DNS CAT2 toolkit and DNS CAT toolkit, uh, toolkit presents a significant challenge associated with detecting it because it supports forwarding channels through legitimate DNS servers um, by embedding um, inside of DNS resource records. And so when we have a packet that's uh, or, uh, that is, or an attacker that's using a DNS packets to exfil data, um, they typically store that inside of the optional text field in DNS. Um, however, because they've accessed confidential information, Pivot wall places the label on the IP on the on the header and the packets forwarded to the controller. At which point we implemented the means to redirect um, to a uh, to a destination honeypot. Um, this allowed us to um, simply um, in, uh, break the attacker's channel um, and and redirect it. Again, this gets implemented in a very simple. Uh, format here where um, we already have some primitives like redirect packet um, lit written into the language for modify scripts. We recognize there's kind of some several, you know, with any framework, there are several limitations, um, and we, we have quite a few currently. We re with the host agent, we recognize that the attacker can disable the host agent um, if he's able to fully compromise the host. And from the presence of a full compromise, an attacker can unlabel confidential data, intercept and modify control messages, exhaust the controller. Additionally, monolithic applications um, are, have proved challenging for the, the simple flow kernel. Um, many database engines ha and web servers themselves implement access controls, and the researchers already behind, behind SE Linux have, have encountered these same challenges and proposed a series of changes uh, to to application software. And then finally, uh, the, the host agent does poorly. Uh, we do not handle the case where it's a distributed environment um, where processes may move between hosts. In conclusion, I was kind of happy to present to you our work pivot wall. That's a new network security architecture to implement information flow control in a distributed environment and it pr proves a feasible approach to enable context-based response and prevention.